Hello everyone. My name is Prince Preet Singh. I am a computer science graduate student at University of Florida. This project is the part of a course pattern recognition. The topic of this project is sentence classification using deep learning. Sentence classification is associated with sentiment analysis. Now what is sentiment analysis? Sentiment analysis is basically assigning polarity to a text, word or a sentence. Sentiments can be positive, negative or neutral on the basis of their semantic meaning. In this project, I have implemented sentiment analysis using deep learning. Now what is deep learning? Deep learning is the branch of artificial intelligence that is essentially developed on the notion of working of a human brain. Earlier researchers used to use older machine learning algorithms for sentimental analysis. Research shows that older learning algorithms give same performance when the data is multifold. But in the case of deep learning, this is not the case. As the amount of data increases, the performance also increases almost linearly. So we can call deep learning is as this is a subfield of machine learning which is currently performing better than the older machine learning algorithms. In this project I have used the Twitter data. Now Twitter allows users to express their views in a very concise way. This project aims at using the deep learning methods to classify the tweets as positive, negative or neutral. Twitter data has some features like hashtags, emoticons, etc. which helps users to express their feelings in a more structured way. This makes Twitter data highly useful from a business point of view. So, classification of tweets using sentiment analysis has a great utilization. Now how to proceed? Like any machine learning application, you will first find the data pre-process the data so as to input it to the model then selecting the proper model in this case since we are using deep learning we will use convolutional neural networks then we will train the data on our data set then validate it then finally test it to find the accuracy achieved and finally we will report our accuracy now let's first look into the model which we are going to use we are going to use convolutional neural network. Convolutional neural network is very different from the traditional feed forward network. Though convolutional neural network is also a feed forward network. But the connectivity pattern, pattern in CNN between its neurons is inspired by the organization of the animal visual cortex. This means it has four fundamental operations, which are namely convolutional, convolution, non-linearity layer, pooling and fully connected layer. In this image, convolutional network is shown to be used in the field of image classification. We have to use CNN in the field of NLP. For NLP also, we have four important layers, namely convolution, non-linearity, pooling and fully connected layer. Let's talk about the convolution layer first. From the mathematics point of view, for any function f and g, the convolution between these two functions is basically, find, basically retaining the characteristics of both the functions to find the final function. In the view of convnets, convolution is basic, basically the convolving of input data with a numeric matrix called convolution kernel that holds the numerically encoded information about the hidden features. Now this convolution kernel is also called feature map. Feature maps are basically the highlight of a feature in a particular pixel area. If you look into this feature map, it is basically a matrix of some floating numbers. Now second layer is non-linearity layer. In our traditional neural networks, we use sigmoid function as the non-linearity function but sigmoid functions have a vanishing within problem 
So we will use RELU which is short short term for rectifier linear unit and it is also a non-linear function. In the case of uh, ReLU, the gradient takes away constant value which is searched in a partial learning. Now the polling layer. Polling layer is typically induced after the convolution layer. The main purpose of convolution uh, uh, polling layer is to bring down the level of dimensionality while retaining the most significant pattern of the data. Polling also reduces the number of learning parameters, hence reducing the computation while identifying the strongest features. The final layer is fully connected layer. The fully connected layer uses the softmax function to identify the most probable output. This layer connects all the neurons in the previous layer to each neuron present in it. With this, our, four, our architecture of CNN ends. Now, we we'll look into the back propagation. The back propagation in CNN is very similar to the back propagation in old uh, traditional neural networks. Now, coming to the data preprocessing part. Our data contains emoticons, non-dictionary words, URLs, and punctuation signs. Now, in the case of emoticons, there are a collection of symbols which corresponds to their meaning in English. For example, in this image, this collection of symbols is, refers to angry, cool, cry, happy, hug. So, we will replace these all symbols with their English meaning. We will also replace the non-dictionary words like em with them. We will also remove the URLs which users share while sharing their tweets because those URLs don't, don't give any sentiment value. We will also remove the punctuation signs because punctuation signs do not reflect any sentiment as well. Now coming to the implementation. I implemented this project using Python programming language. I used TensorFlow so as to make training faster. I ran my code for about 200 epochs. The TensorFlow allowed us to use GPU. We used NVIDIA GE for 940 and GPU. I also used the NumPy library which makes the multiplication between matrices easier. Now training. We divided our data set into 50, 50, 20 and 20 and 10. The 15% was our training data. We trained our data using our convolution neural network model. The total training time was 2 hours. I trained the data for a total of 200 epochs. Before training the data, I had also added an embedding layer. This embedding layer makes the semantic meaning of the words more accessible and making training easier. After While running the program, I also recorded the loss values after each epoch. The loss was observed to be decreasing after every epoch and settling down near to zero after 50 epochs. This graph shows the trend of loss with, with number of epochs. Now let's look at some of the predictions which were done using our CNN model. For a normal sentence, the predicted sentiment of the tweets did match with the expected sentiments. Let's take the example of this tweet. USA military is awesome. This video salute. Now in this tweet, USA military is called awesome which is a positive word. And salute is an action which is also a positive word. So the final sentiment is also positive. Now the sentences which were having emoticons in them, they also give predicted output as expected. Let's take the example of this tweet. Wish Bolton tonight can a sad smiley. Now wish Bolton and tonight, these three words do not reflect any sentiment. But this collection of words at the end, which is of a remote icon, it refers to the word sad, which is a negative. So, we can say that the overall context of the tweet is negative. 
But while running the program, I also recorded the accuracy after each epoch. This graph shows the trend of accuracy with the number of epochs. In the starting, the accuracy was around 0.5, which increased to around 0.9 at the end of 200 epochs. The uh, exact accuracy value that we recorded is equal to 0.97, which means that we were able to predict 97% of the pipette correctly. So with this, our presentation ends. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.